Hi YouTube, welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name's Michael and this of course is Esme. So we're out for a winter overnight camp. We have the Defender HD10 cab with the Apache 360 LT tracks. Snow's pretty deep. Uh, it's up to the knee in the margins. I think someone's been down here maybe weeks ago and cleared part of it. So it's a bit squished down, but we're going great. No problems whatsoever with the tracks and we're just plowing through it. It's a nice heated cab as well. That's why my hands are freezing now. So we're gonna be camping at a spot that I've never been able to get into uh, during the deepest part of the winter months, even with the Argo, uh, because it does have some pretty steep hills. So I'm gonna try with a Can-Am. We'll see how far I get. So no promises we'll get there. I do have a backup site if it doesn't work out, but I'm looking forward to a very pleasant night camping. Temperature right now is about minus 14 Celsius, and that's probably gonna drop down to, I'd say about minus 18 overnight, maybe minus 20, depending. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So if you'd like to come along and join us, you're more than welcome. Come on, let's, let's get going. So we're in the cab, about to set off, and uh, it's nice and warm. Just turn the fan off. Oh, it makes such a difference. My hands are cold. So I'll just give you a quick look around the cab, so you can take and see what we see. So here on the dash, we do have the star to show the tracks are in actually installed. Uh, when you first power up the machine, you have to select that tracks are there a special module which is really handy. We do have four heater outlets and a heater control. We just have it off at the moment and there's some side vents as well and also the more important ones up at the front. Uh, we have the wiper control uh, so we can actually flip the wiper on and off and Esme has lots of room. She also has a new coat on because uh, she had bit much of a haircut which wasn't great so we went and got her a little coat oh, she seems to not mind it too much um, and obviously she has a, a one tigress blanket too just to keep her nice and warm so without further ado let's, uh, let's get going
So this is the section I'm actually personally worried about. This is the, uh, the most difficult part. And this is the Argo Swamp. This is the part I can't cross in the summer without the Argo. And I've never been able to get up the hills with the Argo during the winter time. They're just too steep for the type of track that I had. Um, the traction wasn't great. Argo was great for going over flat snow, happily float, uh, and it would crawl its way up the, the hills, but it wasn't its strong suit. Uh, so I never bothered coming this way. Uh, it is pretty steep, and at the bottom is obviously a swamp. But I do have a long strap if I do get stuck, but we're gonna give it a go. I'm just gonna work out where to put you. <laughs> okay. Well, that went well. I'm <laughs> very pleased. That was uh, barely a problem, barely an inconvenience. No problem at all. So, very pleased. And it just climbed that hill like it wasn't even there. So, onwards. So, we're about to go down a pretty steep hill. It is pretty steep. Just looking about if we get stuck, can we get out tomorrow? I do see some trees at the top, so we could winch out, but yeah, that's pretty steep. That's probably 35 degrees, maybe. What do you think, Es? You want to give it a try? Okay, we're going to give it a try. So this is exactly what I'm trying to avoid and uh, that's why I'm actually going quite slow. I did hit this but it was like a slow speed so I'm not worried. Tracks are all good. Tomorrow when I've actually laid the track it'll be much easier to get out because I, I know all the obstacles are. But this is kind of buried but stuck up enough to cause me a bit of a problem. So something like that, it seems quite small. But what I don't want to do is put any stress on the front of those tracks. And I could obviously see there was a log here. Somewhere. Actually pretty small, but you can kind of see the lumps and bumps. These trails look like they've been made by snowmobilers at some point, but yeah, we're doing pretty good. Not too much snow caught up inside. But what I will do tonight is actually clean out the snow so it doesn't freeze. But pretty packed on the back there. And somewhere behind there is the air filter. I do have the special snow air filter on it, so that's pretty good, but it's a big machine. What's up, Ez? I think she wants to get going. I haven't put the cream on her feet yet. Her mush is waxed, but I 
will. Well, we made it to our little camp spot. Didn't we? Didn't we? And uh, yeah, it went really well. Very pleased with the tracks. Um, they just climbed the hills, like no problem whatsoever. The hills where I thought I'd have problems, it just climbed up. Like you would expect, I guess. Uh, so this is where we're gonna be camping out. This looks over the valley below. There's a small stream at the bottom. Uh, the hill here is probably about 45 degrees. It's pretty insane. I, I don't think this would even climb up. Uh, yeah, that's that's crazy stuff. But let me uh, turn you around so you can take a look. So this is where we're going to be camping for the night. Just going to scrape off a bit of snow. I'm not too worried. It doesn't look that deep in this spot. I think the trees actually shield it quite a bit. Uh, clear that out. There's some wood that I've stacked. <clears throat> There's some wood that I've stacked previously from last year that's still in place. And I'm just seeing if there's, uh, there's a tree here. But I'll probably have to unload, then go cut some wood. So you can find a nice dead stand in somewhere and then bring it back and, and we'll have enough fuel. There's probably enough there already for probably three quarters of a night, but tonight's going to be cold. So I want to keep the, the, uh, the fire going pretty strong. So let's get started. a new shovel that I purchased. This is the Kodiak 3.1. It's kind of an interesting shovel. The fact that you can put it together in two different ways. So you can use it this way. I can release it. It's a little frozen. So you can use it like this. Or you can actually pop it out. Use it as a regular shovel. So it's kind of interesting. So let's get shoveling.
Ooh, that looks good. Oh. I like how easy that is. It's not traditional. That's the part I don't like. But from a practical point of view, it actually <laughs> works really well. I'll never give up my snow tracker tent. Because I just love the smell of it, the feel of it. Just putting it up is an event. It's very really pleasurable. I guess it's almost like driving a vintage car or whatever. There's a pleasure in dealing with something like that. And it's very practical. Uh, it doesn't take much longer to put up than this. Uh, but this is insulated. Um, it's very quick to put up as one person. There's no tie outs, which is another big bonus. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting dichotomy. So let me know what you think of the ice fishing shelter as a hot tent. Uh, I think if you're trying to get into hot tenting and you're starting out with no equipment, if you don't want to invest too much because you know, you're know you not sure whether you're going to continue with it, something like this might be a good option. I bought it for about $350 Canadian and I'm sure I, if I sold it in a year's time I'd get $250 say. But I can also use it for its intended purpose as an ice fishing shelter. So it's multi-purpose. It's very simple. It's just heavy to look around. It's not something you would be able to use and pull on the sled. Whereas a snow trekker you could actually backpack or use it as a, with a pole. So that's the, the main benefit as well. So the snow trekker will go anywhere you need to go. Uh, this is very limited to uh, being a heavy piece of equipment. You'd need something to pull it in with. But we're gonna continue setting up the tent. I have the cot with me, but I brought an old favorite as a sleeping bag. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, climbing into that. Let's get going. So we have the old Helinox and we have the Thermaris Base Camp Large which matches this cot perfectly. I'm going to throw up the sleeping mat first, that's time to inflate, so it means less manual puffing of air. I'm actually going to put the cot up out here because it's a bit easier. So I normally have my cot this way in the cot tent, uh, but because that's going to be too close to the trees for the stovepipe, I'm just going to put it out of this window. I think that should work fine. As long as my cot's kind of level, uh, it's all good. So I also found this in the accessory bag for the 
hot tent. Not quite sure it clips on. It obviously clips onto the poles. Uh, but I've been hanging this up and it's great for putting gloves in and things like that. So that'll be going up shortly. <sighs> okay, next, the sleeping bag. So this is my super bulky woods minus 45 sleeping bag, which I love. It's got three layers inside. Uh, I've used it on some extremely cold trips, but it's just so bulky. But with the Can-Am, bulk doesn't matter. And it's one of Esme's favorite sleeping bags. So let's get that set up. Go on. Slightly too big for the cot, but it works great. <sighs> so we're all set up in the tent. I'm gonna put the hot stove in. I just wanna talk about my, my boots. So these are the N1B uh, US Air Force Arctic Mucklucks and uh, I've made a few changes to them so I just wanted to kind of show you. So one of the planned changes I haven't made yet is to get away from these strings at the top because they're a bit of a pain. Uh, my plan is to put a piece of leather in with a, a stud that you can just fasten across and just put some elastic, some soft elastic, it doesn't have to be super tight. So the boot comes with obviously the boot part of it comes with this felt liner which is very good and it comes with a an insole which is a felt insole as well so what i've done with my boot is i took some reflectix and actually stuck it with double-sided tape on the bottom just like that which just gives it a little bit of extra help. Not that it really needs it, if I'm honest, but I had some, so why not? Uh, the other thing I did, oh, frosted, is I took out the laces, replaced it with these kind of uh, elasticated laces. They're like a lace replacement. I think I saw them on Instagram, <laughs> one of those adverts. And I was like, actually, that might work. So I've been running these for a couple of trips now and they've been fine. Um, but it stops me having to lace the bottom. Typically you would lace that section. And I also have these longer inner boot liners, uh, which were extra. This is just like a pile liner. So what I actually do is put the big sock on first. Be careful, you can do it all in one go. So all set because I have those elasticated laces I can just put my foot straight in. I also wrote on the inside left and right and this is my left boot. <laughs> I failed as me. How did I do that? Okay that's a good time to uh, I was in a bit of a rush. Okay. 
So I have a left and a right boot. It's difficult to tell which is which, obviously. So this is my left boot. To be honest, it doesn't feel any different. And then when I put the press it at the top, it'll just be a quick clip. There we go. Easy on and off. Very comfortable. I've used them with snowshoes without any problems. Love these boots. 30 bucks from eBay. Brand new with the uh, the liners and the insoles. So yeah, can't be that. Probably the best boots you could buy for extreme cold weather uh, for probably less than 50 bucks. The liners, I think, I'll put the prices up. Um, I think the liners were probably about $30, 20 to $30 Canadian for the liners. Uh, don't necessarily need them. I like them because they keep the rest of the leg warm. But unless you're in like super, super cold, uh, shouldn't be too bad. So I have the canvas, the liner, my trousers, and I have a uh, long john, long underwear underneath. And I, I never feel the cold at all, or very rarely. Esme has a little jacket on. Okay, time for the stove. So we have the stove all set up and actually works better because uh, I just sink it down slightly so to the stove pipe fits the way it's intended it's pretty horizontal the stove pipe but it's such a short run I don't think it'll make any difference and this will seem melt out so not too concerned as long as the rest of the thing I think I'm a pretty hard pack everywhere else so I think we should be fine What's that? Be cold? Oh, yeah, I feel bad for Esme. They cut her hair too short. So she's okay. Just keeping an eye on her. That jacket's actually very warm. So let's take a look at the stovepipe. You can see it's uh, pretty horizontal. And I've screwed it together like I normally do. I, I always say, you know, it's a point of safety, screw the stovepipe together because if one of those sections comes apart while you're asleep, it's not gonna end well. You're either gonna be smoked out or worse. So for the sake of just a couple of screws, it's worth it. Such a beautiful area. So we do have a bit of snow at the moment, but it's time to go get some wood. That's our next job. So back into the Can-Am. Oh, just jumped out of the truck and uh, she's pretty deep. That is a lot of snow. As if you jump out, you're going to be right in it. You still want to come or are you going to wait in the, you're going to wait in the vehicle? You want to come out or are you going to stay? Come on. 
So I think that's our tree. It's actually a dead one in there. So I'm going to try and drop it across the trail that way. And I think we should be good. I'm going to back up the machine, try and load it with small logs. So that's the plan. That's quite a lean to it, which is that way. My machine's that way. It's about the best good tree around. Okay, I'm gonna move the vehicle. Okay, it has me safely out of the way. Okay, so that's pretty much hung up in that tree as I expected, but that's fine, just needs a bit of a pull. I'm starting to think there was probably easier trees.
awesome. So now it's down, I'm gonna wind up the winch, pack everything up, turn around and start chainsawing. <sighs> So I've cut all the logs, I'm going to load them up now into the machine. The larger logs I just stacked up for another time. So I've got at least another uh, another two camps maybe there with this extra log. So let's get them loaded up. I'll store this one up at the camp just in case and I can just cut it up if I need to. But they'll stay seasoned, stood up like that. Uh, it's a good tip if you do take down a deadfall most of the time you can't use it all so rather than just leave it around either stack it somewhere nicely uh, where it can continue to season or send it upright and it won't get damp or anything like that and it'd be good for anyone else that comes along wow snow's really coming down I'm liking these helicon techs i think it's a woodcrafter gloves do you find them a little bit narrow in the cuff? Oh, they offer great dexterity. Once you've got them on. Oh. Home sweet home. <laughs> I actually think she's happy now. She's been a bit funny today. She needs the creature comforts. Okay, the next job is to uh, split some of that wood and let's get the stove started. Uh, I did pick up some birch bark while I was down there, so that's pretty good. Uh, but the snow's really coming down. I think I'm going to cover up that box when I'm done. But yeah. Wood splitting, next job. So this is why that tree fell down. Looks like the lower section just 
rotted out and killed the top of the tree so but the rest of the wood is actually very dry it's actually splitting quite well Plenty of wood for at least one night, at least one cold night. <sighs> okay, next job, I'm going to stack this up. Need to get some tinder, some twigs and whatnot from the forest. Uh, and then I think we'll light the stove. And then I'm going to clean the machine before it freezes and just get all the uh, loose snow from in between the tracks and whatnot. So tomorrow we're not going to have any issues with, once it freezes it becomes very, uh, very tough. And I don't want to rip any of the boots or cause any problems. So I'll just take the time now while it's loose and take that off. So I'm glad we got all that done. It's, uh, I don't want it to freeze because if it gets around those CV boots, I'm afraid it's gonna kind of tear a hole if one of the ice has a, I don't know, a bit of a stick in it or something like that. If it's pure ice, it'll just rub and it'll lubricate with the water. I don't think that's too much of a problem, but if there's anything in the ice, then it basically acts as a, a shear tool. That's my thoughts anyway. But it takes a few minutes and uh, I feel a lot better about it. Get all the ice off the obvious stuff and uh, be good. And as I say, an ounce of maintenance saves a, a pound of Fahrenheit or trouble, whatever. What is?
Esme and I are just hanging out in the hot tent. It's actually getting nice and warm, so we'll have to crank it down. We have a whole stack of wood. Temperature is going to go down to about minus 20 Celsius tonight, so it's going to be interesting. I haven't changed anything with the Can-Am as far as the battery so far. Uh, two reasons. I have two other backups, so I'm not too concerned. Like, I'll get it started. But I want to see if there's a problem with it. Um, I went out a couple of weekends ago, which I didn't film, and minus 10, it's fine. Started, no problem. I want to see if minus 20 kills it. If it does, then I'm going to be marching back into the dealership because it should start at minus 20 with that battery. It's a 30 amp hour battery, so it shouldn't be an issue. So it's kind of a test. I have two other backups as well. Um, I'm not too concerned, but I'll take the battery out. I'll warm it up. I'll get it started. We're not in any any kind of significant danger or anything weird like that. So um, more curious than anything else. So let's see what happens. So we've just had our supper and it was actually really nice. We had the pasta and the tuna. I didn't film it because it's not really that exciting. Um, but Esme's having a good old snow back over there somewhere. Hopefully you can see her. But we're having a great time, just relaxing. Um, I've got my podcast on and uh, it's great to catch up. Last week was pretty tough. Uh, we had the furnace, the water and everything fail. So I had to get a crew of um, guys come in and repair all that stuff. Now we have heat and water and that's great and I'm out camping so I'm very very happy. I'm looking forward to climbing to the wood sleeping bag. It's a minus 45 so it's extremely heavy and uh, it's just like oh it's amazing. If you've never climbed into a very heavy sleeping bag before it's uh, something to behold and uh, I don't mind if the fire goes out because it won't make any difference. So for now I wish you good night and I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, everyone. I slept like a baby, just completely zonked out. I didn't wake up to stoke the fire, didn't wake up for any reason. I was just completely out of it. Um, <laughs> it was good. Had the big minus 45 sleeping bag. Me and Esme just kind of slept, cuddled up together, and uh, we just slept all through the night. Probably one of the best nights sleep I've ever had. Oh, that was just so good. It's cold this morning. Um, I've got the stove on already, so I did get up and put some wood in the, the stove. It was completely out, obviously. Oh, I'm going to lie here for a little bit longer, I think. Oh, that was epic. Yeah, very comfortable. This sleeping bag's very heavy, but it's it's... I love it. Yeah, when it's my time, just wrap me up in this thing and throw me in a hole. I'll be quite happy. <laughs> All right, time for breakfast and coffee next.
Oh, coffee's ready. Oh, that's good. Oh, perfect. Right, formula should be done. That is also perfect. I think I'll pick out some pieces without onions. For Esme. So she can have a little bit of uh, omelette too. She's already had her breakfast, so I'll just give her just a little bit. So we're gonna have breakfast. Uh, start to pack away and we're going to check if the machine starts it's minus 15 so it started minus 10 last time minus 15 i think it should start but we shall see i have several backup plans if it doesn't so i'm going to try something against my better judgment i'm going to go down this hill in the can -Am. i don't think it will make it back up but kind of let's see a couple of snowmobilers went down there earlier so let's see what the limits of the machine are there is another way around uh and it's probably going to take me about half an hour to turn this thing around but uh let, let's see how far we get what's the worst that can happen Well, I'm officially impressed. Didn't think that would happen. Had a few kind of spins at the bottom, but once I started up the hill, just, yeah. That's gotta be a 40% grade at the bottom there. That's pretty insane. Well, now you know. So do I. I don't think I'll, I'll have any problems getting out.
So this is the hill I was worried about yesterday, but I think after doing the little test we did, I don't think we'll have any problems. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to put it to low range. If lock is off. Obviously I'm in four wheel drive. Super simple, barely an inconvenience. Uh, just remarkable what these tracks can do. Hmm. Yeah, onwards. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.